Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we're gonna to be doing a super quick and easy tutorial. I'm gonna show you how to make this designer handbag inspired tumbler. Very much Gucci vibes on this one. And I love how it turned out. I'm sorry, this isn't gonna be the most like technical and involved tutorial, just a super simple and easy one to do. Quick vinyl wrap and you're gonna get beautiful results. I hope you guys like this video. I'm gonna have all the products listed and linked down below in the description box as usual, along with a few discount codes for you there as well. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start off how we usually do by properly prepping and sanding our cup. I'm just using a 60 grit sanding block to sand all the surfaces of the cup really quickly. And then I will wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol and paper towels. We do this so that everything will adhere to the cup properly. Once we're done with that, we're ready to move on to our next steps. All right, so for this design, we're going to be wrapping our cup with this beautiful snakeskin patterned vinyl that I got from the vinylcottageshop.com. This is vinyl that comes pre-printed like this, and it is a glossy permanent vinyl. Okay, so since this is a seamless pattern, we want our pattern to be symmetrical on both sides of the stripes that will later go down the center of this design. So I'm just kind of seeing where that pattern meets in the middle and trim off the excess that I don't need. I'm marking where that point is in the pattern by just folding the vinyl a little bit. You can see what I'm doing here. And I'm using a 30 ounce skinny straight from Craft Haven. And you definitely want to use a straight non-tapered cup for this. It makes your life so much easier. If you want to find these non-tapered cups, you'll find the link and discount code down in the description box. All right, you guys. So once I have an idea of where my pattern will start and stop, I am going to trim off some of the excess there, at least on just one side. And I'm going to use my paper trimmer for that. I'm going to trim off some of this excess like white salvage ends on our vinyl because it's not necessary to have that on there and it might be a pain in our butt later on so just go ahead and trim off those excess white spots as well after trimming off that excess on the one side and any of the white borders we should be left with something like this so that when we kind of mock up how the pattern will meet in the middle it's symmetrical on both sides so after I've got my vinyl trimmed up, we're ready to apply it onto the cup. You guys have seen me apply vinyl to cups many, many times. Uh, mainly what I like to do here is use a flat surface like my table that's totally level to kind of line up the straight edge on the cup so that it comes to a perfectly straight line down the side of my cup. Then I will lift back about one inch of the transfer paper from the back of my vinyl. Trim off that one inch section of transfer paper. And we're gonna use that exposed one inch section of vinyl as our anchor down the one side of the cup. That's where we're starting. So see, I've got the edge, the straight edge of my vinyl lined up against my level straight table. And I'm going to use that to line up a straight beginning point for my anchor section of vinyl there. And we're just going to anchor that little one inch section down first. It's important that we get that starting point completely straight. And don't worry if you have a little bit of overlap on the top and the bottom of your cup. We kind of want that little bit of overlap. We can always trim that up and perfect it later. I'm going to use the... Uh, felt side of my vinyl scraper here just to push out any kind of bubbles and I'm also going to kind of do a trial run of my wrap just to make sure that my ends will meet up how I want. I will have a one inch overlap at the very end seam here that will trim up later. Once I'm confident about where we're going I'm going to start to remove the backing sheet of my vinyl by pushing it back with my vinyl scraper, if that makes sense. So 
the pressure from me pushing the vinyl onto the cup is what will push that paper backing off of the vinyl. We're not removing the paper backing ourselves. We wanna keep that paper backing on for as long as possible. And we're trying to push out any bubbles as we go. If I find a large section of bubbles, I will just pull up the vinyl and then reposition it back down to remove any of the bubbles. And also you guys don't kill yourself on this part. It's okay to have one or two little tiny bubbles, that's fine. What we're mainly trying to avoid here is the wrinkles. And so we've made it to our end and I'm gonna press down the overlap against that seam there so I have a really clear line on where I need to trim. Really, really try to push that overlap piece into the seam so you can you know, really see clearly where you need to cut. And then I'm gonna run my craft knife along that seam edge there. Really carefully take your time with this, guys. Get a nice, clean, straight edge and then we'll remove that excess. So hopefully what we're left with is this really nice seamless seam here um, with this beautiful snakeskin pattern. We're gonna go up to the top here and trim off this excess vinyl with our craft knife. Really sharp knife here. We're just gonna run this along the edge of our cup and trim it up as nicely as we can, also pushing out any kind of wrinkles or lifting as we're doing that. All right, now we're gonna use our cup edging tool from the wickedshimmersupply.com to trim up that bottom rim and get everything nice and clean looking. You can find a link for the cup edging tool down below in the description box along with a discount code. Once we've got all that cleaned up, I'm just going to make sure all of our edges on the top and bottom rim are smoothed out nicely. And then I am going to apply those signature red and green stripes. I cut these using the shapes feature in Cricut Design Space. We're using just regular Oracal 651 permanent glossy vinyl for the stripes. And the green stripe I cut at 2.5 inches wide by 11.5 inches long. The red stripe is 1 inch wide by 11.5 inches long. Again, this is just using the shapes feature in Cricut Design Space. If you wanted to cut these strips using your vinyl trimmer or your paper trimmer, you could definitely do that too. I just really wanted to make sure that I got these lines absolutely precise. I'm gonna trim off any of the excess paper on both the red and white stripe, and then we will transfer these using some transfer tape. All we're doing here is using that straight edge at the top of that shape that we cut to line it up along the top rim of the cup to make sure we've got a straight line all the way down the cup and I'm anchoring it using a small piece of transfer tape. You could also use packing or uh, what's it called? Painter's tape for that too if you wanted. Then using kind of a hinge method, we'll remove the paper backing from our strip of vinyl here starting at the end that's anchored with the transfer tape. And we're going to try and transfer this as carefully as possible to make sure we don't get any bubbles. And I'm gonna do that by keeping the transfer paper on for as long as possible and pressing down firmly with my hands using an up and down motion along the side of the cup. Um, you really want to take your time with this to make sure you push all the bubbles out. We can't really pull up and smooth out if we do encounter some bubbles. So make sure you take your time here. End up with any kind of small little air bubbles, you can just poke them with your craft knife and then smooth them out with the felt section of your vinyl scraper. For this excess at the bottom, I'm just gonna quickly slice that with my craft knife as straight as I can. It's such a small section, I'm not gonna bother using the cup edging tool for that. We are going to clean up this bottom section later on in the process, so don't worry if that's perfect. Now we're ready to lay that red stripe through the center here. If it's easier for you to layer vinyl before you place it on the cup, you could do that as well. However, with larger sections of vinyl, I find that I get more success with layering them on the cup just because air bubbles tend to happen more for me. Uh, you may find the opposite so though, so whatever is easiest for you, just do that. <laughs> um, and we're going to transfer this red stripe the same way that we transferred the green. 
and do our best to make sure that this is as centered as possible by measuring with our ruler so that we have the same amount of green stripe on either end of this red stripe. All right, and then once we've got that red stripe on there, again, we're just gonna trim off that excess at the bottom, and now we're ready to go into our first coat of epoxy. This first coat was about 30 milliliters of epoxy, and we are going to let this first coat dry for about 8 to 12 hours. I'm not going to go into a second coat before decals with this because we don't have any glitter. So one coat and you should be smooth enough to do decals. So here we are with our beautiful epoxy layer all dry and I'm ready to sand up any kind of rough spots. I did have some lifting from my vinyl down there at the very bottom. So I'm gonna make sure that I smooth that out really, really well with my sanding block. I've got an 80 grit sanding block here and we're just going to smooth down any of those sharp edges that might have been left from that vinyl. And of course, I'm going to sand down a thin rim of stainless steel up at the very top of our cup, which will later be where our final layers of epoxy will adhere to create our final seal. After I have sanded my cup, I'm going to take it in and rinse it off with some dish soap and water. And then we will dry it off with some coffee filters. And now we're ready to apply our decal. All right, so for my decal design, I just used my company logo. It's our signature FS, and I've cut it using the toasted champagne vinyl from thevinylpeople.com. This is one of my favorite gold adhesive vinyls. I love the matte texture, and it's just the perfect shade of champagne gold. Once I've got my decal all weeded, I'm going to use my transfer tape. Uh, to transfer it onto the cup. However, you want to make sure that you have a little bit of overlap with your transfer tape to help you anchor it to the cup while you're positioning things. I'm also going to fold my decal in half so I'll have an easier time centering it and finding the center of my logo in relation to the center of those stripes. I'm going to uh, use my ruler to measure twice, so I only have to cut once, and then we'll transfer our decal like we normally would. And then to finish off the bottom here, I just taped off the very bottom rim, and you wanna make sure that you get as straight as a line as possible, because we're going to be painting that bottom with some spray paint. We want that bottom spray painted section to look like it's part of our design. So a nice straight line for this masking part is super important. You also want to make sure that it's perfectly smooth on the bottom of your cup before moving forward with the paint so you don't see any kind of bumps or ridges through the paint. You might be asking why didn't I just paint it from the beginning and that's because there's a lot of damage that could happen to that painted bottom during that vinyl application process and I also didn't want to see those those ridges in the bottom of my cup through the paint. I want a nice smooth painted bottom. So we're just masking off the whole cup with some saran wrap and I'm using just a regular flat black spray paint to spray paint the bottom of our cup and I let that dry for about 20 to 30 minutes before I went into my final coats of epoxy. This particular cup took about two final coats of epoxy before we were totally smooth and that was it. We were done. So I told you guys this was a really easy tutorial, super simple design, but I think it is such an impactful look, so classy, so sophisticated. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. We do upload videos every Wednesday and Saturday. We'll see you again soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flint Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also, be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course, subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.